Aloha, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Amplid Aloha Vibes Snowboard. This board features Amplid's cruise camber, which is basically directional cam rocker. So what you get is predominantly a mellow cambered snowboard with a little bit of early rise rocker in the nose. This is gonna give you that load pop and drive of traditional camber underfoot, but with that early rise out in the nose, you're gonna get more optimal powder float as well as a slight ease of entry in and out of turns. This board is only available in 154. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a day that had overcast skies, some snow falling, average temps, you had a little bit of dust on top of the groomers, you had fresh pow in the trees or lumpy chunder pow, you even had some lumps and chunder on top of the runs, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label Bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. This board has a somewhat playful free ride flex to it that puts it around an overall middle of the road. It is directional, so you do have that softer nose and then it gets a little bit stiffer through that camber section and inserts. Now when it comes to the torsional flex, it feels slightly set back, so it's more towards that back foot. That's just something that I noticed when I was riding it and how it would twist and steer. A lot of that can be due in part to the actual shaping of this board as well as the flex pattern. And when it comes to stability, it's moderately stable because you've got this width. Obviously, you're gonna get some chatter in the nose and a little bit of that will resonate back under the front foot, but through the insert pack, it's, it's stable and a lot of that is due to the width as well as the camber profile on it. This is a board that will plow through heavier snow and it doesn't get bucked around too much in ruts and chunder like other boards in this category. What's nice about this board is you have a wider platform with a mellow camber to engage with. So loading it up really takes no effort at all and the snap is there. You'll notice right away that it does rebound. It pops. Is it the most snappy board in this category? No. Does it get the job done? Yes. It's easy to launch a cat track gap, a side hit, ollie over a family of fat skier people, launch a little powder popper. You don't really have to worry about it with this board. One thing to note with buttering on this board is obviously you want to do it on the nose just with the directional shape of this board, the swallowtail and whatnot. You have to get your weight leveraged more out towards that up kick in the tail right where that early rise is and it takes a little bit more effort. You're gonna put a little bit more into this and that's where the camber kind of takes over and it wants to pop and fight you back out of the press that you've put into it. So be aware of that. Now with the tail, you're pretty much doing wheelies with this thing. You're just like going fast, screaming and just getting it up and going with it. But the nose, you just gotta work for it. So find some steeper terrain with some fresh pow. It'll make things a little bit easier. Use a little more speed and muscle it just a little bit more than you think you have to. With the abundance of width in this board, it can still carve. It's a board that has a unique way of engaging a turn. It's quick and nimble off the nose when you engage, due in part to that micro rocker in there, but then it slows down as you get closer to that front foot and that kind of takes over and it makes it more mellow and nuanced. But then as you flex it from inside the front binding back through the tail, you can be a little bit more aggressive with it and get it to load up the tail to give you that energy to shoot you out of a carve, to give you that little slingshot effect of it. Now, is it going to be the best board for deep, hard, aggressive carves? No, but it can handle them. It's strong suit are those medium mellow setup turns where you're on edge or those elongated carves where you're just swooping from one side of the trail to the other but not leaving a trench. This thing isn't really a trench layer, as more of a carvy cruiser. So who's this board for? It's for the resort ripping, tree riding, free ride pow chasing guy. There's something about getting on an amplet snowboard that's just comforting. You know you're on a solid board and it feels like you've ridden it for a hundred days, whether it's your first day or it is your hundredth day on it. They just have a unique feel to them that's all their own and it's great. It truthfully is. What I liked about this board is it's quick and nimble in the trees. It has great powder float. 
It's fun on edge. It's surfy and laid back, but you can attack your turns if you absolutely need to. It's one of those boards that just kind of fits in that amalgamation of party board slash powder resort curvy cruiser. You know, you can kind of just do anything with it. Comparable boards, the Cruet Dart, the Nidecker Mosquito, the Solomon Six Stick. Binding recommendations, the Ride A8, the Now Select, the Rome Katana. This has been my review of the Amp Lit Aloha Vibes. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.